you're planning on traveling to Australia from outside the country to see the Great Ocean Road, your best bet is to fly into Melbourne. Once in Melbourne, you can either rent a car to drive the Great Ocean Road yourself, or book a tour that will take you to the top spots along the road. If you're interested in seeing an overview of the map of the Great Ocean Road and its surrounding area, I've included one here for you to review. If you're visiting from within Australia, you can either start your tour of the Great Ocean Road in Torquay, the traditional starting spot, or do the tour backwards by starting in Allensford. Here's a pro tip. If it isn't too inconvenient to start in Allensford, it is beneficial to do so because you'll miss all the big crowds by touring the Great Ocean Road in reverse. If you're looking at tours, be mindful that some small tours drive the Great Ocean Road in reverse for this very reason. So if you aren't planning to drive yourself, but would still like to miss the big crowds, look for small tours that drive the Great Ocean Road in reverse order. When packing for the Great Ocean Road, there are certain pieces of equipment you'll want to have with you. A backpack, a jacket, comfortable shoes, a rain poncho, a camera, water bottle, sunscreen, and a pair of sunglasses are all essential equipment. One thing that you will never be in short supply of when driving the Great Ocean Road in Australia is amazing things to see and do. There are few road trips in this world that are as chock full of beautiful views, amazing wildlife, and memorable experiences to have. These are the 10 sites that everyone driving the Great Ocean Road absolutely must see. The official start of the Great Ocean Road is in the beautiful city of Torquay. This iconic surf city is home to two of Australia's most iconic surf brands. Both the Quicksilver and Rip Curl surf companies were founded in the city, which just goes to show you how seriously Australians in this part of the country take their surfing. Before you start heading down the Ocean Road, I would suggest taking some time to explore the shops and restaurants in the city of Torquay. Speaking of surfing, one of the first things that you will encounter after departing Torquay is the infamous Bells Beach. Considered to be one of the top surf beaches in all of Australia, Bells Beach was famously showcased at the end of the Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze film Point Break. The beach is where Bondi, played by Patrick Swayze, famously went to surf at the end of the movie during the infamous 100 year storm. While the movie clearly dramatized the size of the waves at the beach, the beach is world famous for its surf which has made it one of the most recognized beaches in the world. Next to the Twelve Apostles, arguably the most recognized landmark on the Great Ocean Road is the iconic Memorial Arch. Built to honor the 3,000 soldiers who returned from World War I and worked on building the Great Ocean Road, the Memorial Arch is one of the most popular tourist stops along the route. When it comes to Australian wildlife, one of the animals people most often want to catch a glimpse of in the wild is the koala. Not only is the Kennet River area along the Great Ocean Road one of the best places to find wild koalas, but you also have a great chance of spotting other wildlife in the area as well. Whether you're taking a tour of the Great Ocean Road or driving the road yourself, I would strongly recommend a stop in the Kennet River area. Just before you reach Cape Otway and the amazing Great Otway National Park, you will encounter the breathtaking Apollo Bay. I would strongly recommend that you take some time to explore this amazing area before heading off into the National Park. If you are looking for a great place to stop, stretch, and grab a bite to eat, and enjoy some beautiful views of the ocean, then Apollo Bay is a great option. Widely regarded as one of Australia's most unique, diverse, and beautiful landscapes, the Great Otway National Park is an absolute must-see along the Great Ocean Road. The rainforest within the park and the stunning waterfalls and diversity of wildlife that the forests are hiding are amazing to behold in person. In addition to the breathtaking scenery, there are also a lot of fun activities that you can enjoy within the Great Otway National Park area. Most notable is the infamous Otway Treetop Adventures, which involves walking on platforms in the treetops and taking zip lines from one section of the forest to another. You'll be blown away by the beauty of the forest as you walk over 150 feet above the forest floor. If heights aren't your thing, there are also a number of really fun hiking paths through the forest that you can enjoy as well. While you're there, keep your eyes peeled for koalas and other wildlife that call the park their home. Along the coast of the Great Otway National Park is Cape Otway, which is equally as beautiful as the rest of the park. With stunning coastline and one of the prettiest lighthouses I've seen in my travels, Cape Otway is something that should not be missed along your drive of the Great Ocean Road. There's a lot of really pretty coastline in this world and Australia certainly has its fair share of it. In all my travels, 
There are very few pieces of coastline that can match up to the coastline found in Port Campbell National Park in terms of raw beauty and ruggedness. The limestone cliffs, sea stacks, grottos, and other natural rock formations that you'll find in this stretch of coastline are nothing short of spectacular. Believe me, the beauty is something that you need to see firsthand to truly appreciate, which is why I think seeing Port Campbell National Park alone is worth driving the Great Ocean Road. Out of all the amazing landmarks along the shores of Port Campbell National Park, none are as widely recognized as the infamous Twelve Apostles. These legendary sea stacks are so profoundly beautiful that you'll find yourself watching the waves crash into them for hours. Heading further into Port Campbell National Park, the next major landmark that you'll encounter is the enchanting Loch Ard Gorge. Back in June of 2009, the arch of Island Archway crumbled into the sea, leaving two large sea stacks in the ocean. These two sea stacks have been named Tom and Eva after the survivors of the 19th century shipwreck of the large clipper ship named the Loch Ard. When you visit the gorge, there are some nice walkways that allow you to get some different perspectives of this beautiful stretch of coastline and admire these beautiful sea stacks within the gorge. In addition to the Twelve Apostles and Loch Ard Gorge, the London Arch in Port Campbell National Park is another must-see landmark for visitors traveling the Great Ocean Road. This beautiful sea stack has had the center of it erode to the point where it formed a natural arch in the stack. If you are like me and love natural arches, then you'll love the London Arch. The final landmark inside Port Campbell National Park that I'd like to highlight for you to see as you travel along the Great Ocean Road is a feature that is known locally as the Grotto. This natural arch in the limestone cliffs along the coast is another of the can't miss landmarks in the area. Make sure you have your camera with you when you visit because you'll definitely want to capture photographs of the sunlight reflecting off the calm tidal pools inside the Grotto while the ocean waves are crashing on the outside. When many foreign tourists think of Australia, they mistakenly think the weather is hot all year round. While the weather tends to be warm in the tropical northern region of the country year round, the same cannot be said for the more temperate southern coastal region of the country. In fact, during the winter months of June through August, the weather can actually get fairly chilly near the Great Ocean Road. If you'd like to visit when the weather is warmer, I would suggest targeting the warmer months. The weather is warmest in the months of December through February, but that is also the busiest time of year along the Great Ocean Road. To avoid the crowds and still have warm weather, I would suggest targeting the shoulder months of October through November or March through April. A majority of the rainfall that the region around the Great Ocean Road gets throughout the year comes during the late autumn, winter, and early spring months of May through October. If you are looking to maximize the amount of sunshine you get during your visit, then I would definitely try to avoid the winter months of June through August. Instead, I would target the summer months of December through February or the shoulder months of March, April, or November. These shoulder months tend to see less rainfall than in the autumn, winter, and early spring months, but have less tourist traffic than the busy summer months do. One of the most important decisions you're going to have to make when planning your trip to see the Great Ocean Road is where you will stay. When you travel, the accommodations you choose are often amongst the biggest expenditures for your trip. So not only do you need to be comfortable with where you're staying, but you also need to be comfortable with how much you're paying to stay there. Finding the right accommodations for your trip involves looking at amenities, the location, and most importantly, the price. In terms of where you'll book your accommodations, that will largely depend on how many days you'll take to explore the Great Ocean Road. If you're planning on exploring the road as a day trip, you can find a hostel, a hotel, or a room share in Melbourne and rent a car for the day to drive the road. However, if you're going to be spending multiple days exploring the road, you will want to find some accommodations along the route. If you're starting to plan your trip and want some hotel and hostel suggestions, I've included some great options for you to consider along the road at different price points here. This should give you plenty of options to get your planning started. When most people plan a trip, their primary focus is on how to get there, where to stay, and what to see and do. What many travelers neglect to plan is where to eat when they are there. While sometimes it can be fun to be spontaneous when choosing a restaurant while traveling, it can also be advantageous to have some ideas of restaurants you'd like to try during your trip written down beforehand as well. 
This way you can be assured you won't miss out on a highly recommended culinary experience that you will regret. To help you decide in some restaurants along the Great Ocean Road to add to your list, I have included a list of some highly recommended options here for you to review. There's an abundance of amazing things to see and do along the Great Ocean Road and one of the best ways to experience those is on a tour. If you're looking for fun tours and excursions to fill out your trip, I've included some great tour options at different price points for you to consider to start to plan. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and sign up on my blog to receive free premium travel content.